Let's frolic with nature! Oh, that sounded dirty. Rare candy makes a Pokemon grow immediately by one level, and I reiterate my advice, try to hold on to these as long as you can, because, as I've mentioned before, um, there's a lot more experience required to get a level up at higher levels than at lower levels, so you really get more bang for your buck if you wait as long as you can. You're gonna gain a lot more experience from each individual rare candy, and I also recommend using it when you're just starting out on a new level instead of when you need, you know, 10% more in order to um, get your level up. And yeah, trade evolutions, and believe it or not, I still get loads of comments asking me just how I got those trade evolutions in my previous LPs, even though I told you countless times, and yeah, bug Pokémon sometimes crawl through the windows, and since this is the Pokémon world, bugs are much larger than in real life, so even a Caterpie infiltrating a house would be sort of a scary encounter. Of course, <laughs> I wouldn't say the same for Metapods, since, well, they can't move at all and thus cannot, but cannot enter houses, but whatever. Those tree houses are actually pretty cool. This is one of those really unique towns that I really like, and oh man, I was getting excited. I was wondering what those guys could sell, but it turns out that uh, it's just stuff for your secret base. And since I'm not interested whatsoever in those secret base shenanigans, these guys can go straight to hell. That guy over there sold desk, and this one sells chairs. But since I have no use for it, he may as well be be selling wood mails for all I care. Completely freaking useless. Because I, I don't know what they were thinking when they introduced mail into those games. If you really wanted to send a message to someone else, well, why not just talk to them? It's like text messaging. I don't understand the point of text messaging when you can just use the phone to talk to the person and it's far more convenient than using a text message and also a lot easier to understand because I saw the... oh wait a minute... um... Route 131... oh that's the location of Sky Pillar so he's gotta be talking about Rayquaza and uh, yeah as I was about to say text messages for those of you who are as uneducated as me on the matter, they usually tend to be really, really hard to read. I am no good at that kind of lingo. I am at my best when everything is on the same page. That is, when they, uh, when they write or speak French or English that I can at least understand. With text messages, not a chance. Anyway, that guy over there who was talking about Rayquaza, he mentioned Route 131, okay? Not Sky Pillar. Now, I want you to remember this because this is going to be rather important for a little rant that I'm going to do a bit later on in the game. And, oh, this guy here is talking about Steven, or trained to terrifying extremes. Well, of course, he, he his Pokémon... <laughs> He might even be stronger than the gym leader in this town. Well, the gym leader is 20 levels or so under the champion, and Steven is like 20 levels or so over the champion, even though he's got that special sweeping Abron of Doom! Oh yeah, I remember this. I'm gonna try right hand, correct, so we shall try again. I'm, I think left this time. No! So I can try an infinite number of times until I get it right. So right, and of course this time it's gonna be right because it's always the same thing, and now it's gonna be left. Your hidden power has awoken. Well, no, I just sort of remembered it from previous playthroughs. And this is TM10 Hidden Power, which is a great move to use competitively on simulators, but on cartridges, not so much. <laughs> How do you rely on Hidden Power to stay awake? You hit stuff with Hidden Power. Nope, this is the Sleep Talk Tutor, and I am going to pass because I already got the blue flute, so this is sort of redundant. And there's one last treehouse left to check out. There doesn't seem... Oh! This guy wants a Valdi. I'll do anything for it. Anything? Did you hear that? What, what does he want for the Valdi? No, what is he, is he going to give me for the Valdi? Rather, it's, it's a Plusle. 
crap Pokemon for crap Pokemon. Not interested. Even after I bared my heart to you. Oh, Criny River! And old Granny here is going to spout some nuggets of wisdom because all old people in RPGs are just moving fortune cookies. Or not really moving, as the case may be. And the gym can't be accessed right now because there's a Kecleon blocking the way. We're gonna solve that mystery in not too long. So that does it for this tour of Fortree. It was a rather small town compared to something like Rustboro, but we're gonna go back, of course, because we still have to deal with that gym. Now, there was... I don't remember who it was who pointed out in one of my really old videos, I think it was Red Part 16 or 17, something like that. It was in my first month of making LPs, and just to give you an idea, I started doing LPs a few weeks after Platinum came out in Japan. Now, <laughs> the, the thing with doing, you know, sort of podcasts uh, at the same time as I'm LPing is that the subject that I'm going to talk about is going to become outdated at some point. Though, well, to be fair, it's still, it's still interesting to get an idea of what I was thinking at the time, just to see me get it horribly wrong, and that's exactly what, ha what happened in the instance that I'm talking about. In that video, I was talking about Scizor, and how I wasn't sure if the presence of Bullet Punch was going to allow it to leapfrog Heracross, and wow, I really put my foot in my mouth on that one. Not only did it leapfrog Heracross, sending it almost to the boundary between overused and underused, but it leapfrogged everything else! It, it's more used than everything else by several percentage points. Even the likes of Salamence and Gyarados can't hold a candle to Scizor and how it's being overused. And yeah, while I was talking, I picked up that, uh, that rare candy in a dead end. I mean, come on, it was so obvious that there was something there. There were two, count them, two cuttable trees just waiting there for me to cut them. And it would have been absolutely ridiculous if there were two cuttable trees and absolutely nothing behind it. Not that I would have started to curse or anything. I think it would have been a very interesting trap, actually. You put... Oh, there's another Kekli on there, because that item there, there's a lake beyond it, a small lake that you can see part of it. Oh, Wild Absol! I actually, I love that thing. If only it had more speed, it would be a lot more use, definitely. Because what's so awesome about it is that in the third generation, it was nothing special. But in this one, it picked up Super Luck, which raises its critical hit rate. And combine it with the ass load of high critical moves that it gets, like a Stone Edge, Night Slash. It gets a wide variety of those moves, so you can eventually end up with a 50% critical rate on all your moves. I believe if you use a... Uh, the... Oh god, I, for I can't believe I forgot that item that increases the critical rate. It just goes to show you how highly I think of that item. And then finally we got an item in the, the holes in the tall grass, because on Route 119 there weren't any items in those. But as I was about to say, past that item that you saw, there's a lake with a cave in it, and in that cave there's a sunny day TM, but it looks like we're gonna have to get another freaking Kecleon out of the way to get it. And speaking of those Kecleons, I'm gonna stop here for now, but in the next video, I am finally going to get the Devon Scope, which is going to allow me to see those Kecleons.